Welcome to BCH Technologies. My name is Kevin. Today we're going to work on HP's twin chamber cartridges, such as 564, 902, 903, 920, 934, and 935. If a cartridge looks like this, it is a twin chamber cartridge. Also, some of those cartridges can be used with a program called HP Instant Ink which is about $10 per 300 pages. At the BCH, we are all about saving money, so we are going to show you how to make it even better. We are going to use an OfficeJet Pro 6968 with 902 cartridges with uh, Instant Ink. We will make uh, three videos. This is the first video, which will show you some basics. We'll start printing with the initial startup cartridges. When the cartridge is empty, we'll refill them with four different methods. Also, we'll show how to let the printer accept refill cartridges. We'll only fill the front chamber in this video. In the second video, we'll take things to the next level. We'll fill both chambers, front and back, and utilize the whole thing. Also, we will make a chip holder, which allows the printer to accept third-party cartridges with a transparent casing. In the third video, we will add a big ink tank and feed the cartridge with a bucket of ink. This is the ultimate holy grail of money saving. The printer will never run out of ink. A twin chamber cartridge is divided into two chambers. The back chamber is designed as an ink reservoir. The front chamber is filled with sponges. The sponge regulates the ink flow to the outlet on the bottom. The two chambers are divided by a wall. For non-XL cartridges, such as a regular cartridge or startup cartridge, the wall is sealed on the bottom. Therefore, the ink cannot flow to the front chamber. The back chamber is never used. If you can find a way to make a hole in the bottom of this wall, you will make a X, uh, you will make an XL cartridge. On the top, there is a T-shaped air intake, which leads to a long air channel. The air channel connects to an air hole. When a cartridge is in use, the cartridge sucks air into it from air hole. On top of the back chamber, there is a refill hole. For XL cartridges, HP injects ink into this hole and seal it with a plastic ball. The refill hole is not used by regular or startup cartridges, although they still have this opening and they still have the plastic ball. We cut open an XL cartridge. We can see the opening at the bottom of the dividing wall. But the same opening is placed on top of a regular cartridge. Therefore, we will only refill the front chamber for regular and startup cartridges. Now let's get to work. We bought a new printer and uh, putting the startup cartridge. And 340 pages later, the printout started to look horrible. We know the printer ran out of ink, uh, especially the magenta ink. However, the printer still thinks there is about 10 to 20 percent of ink left. Today, we're going to use a kit called the ID30 KCMY which is available at uh, www.bchtechnologies.com and uh, under Refill Ink and uh, Refill Ink for HP and uh, after you get it to Refill Ink for HP just click uh, this 120 mil and uh, you can see this kit right here uh, is ID30 KCMY and also you can use a disc kit, which is a full pigment kit. And uh, the pigment pig 
uh, pigmentator will look much better, and but you pay more. Also, uh, the pigment kit doesn't include a drill, so there's no drill with that kit. We have four colors and a drill. We're going to use four different methods. Let's use the magenta cartridge for the first method. We flip over the cartridge and uh, drip ink onto it. We add ink until the ink overflows or coming out of from the bottom. If you refill it correctly, you can see if you put it on the table, then you pick it up and there should be no ink coming out, which means the pressure is balanced. The second method is usually done by refill stores, such as Costco. Let's take a Costco refilled cartridge as an example. Costco drills a small hole near the air hole and then add ink through this hole. After that, they will put a bandage over it. In this case, a small wet sticker. The bandage doesn't need to be airtight, so a piece of a scotch tape will do the job. We are now working on the cyan cartridge. We can see the air hole underneath the lighter C. We'll drill the hole between the air hole and the HP symbol. Then we'll fill it up until the ink comes out. And then we put a bandage over it. For the third method, we use a tool called a refill pedestal. The tool can be found on eBay for about $10 a color. However, the black pedestal can fit all cartridges. So if you on a budget, you can just buy a color pedestal. Uh, this company uh, who made a, a pedestal uh, uses a small adapter which works with their own ink bottles. However, you don't have to buy their ink. You can just use a needle to suck up the ink into a syringe and then put the adapter on the top of the syringe. We don't sell pedestal at the BCH uh, because um, I think our customer are capable of flip, flip the cartridge over. However, we cover it here just because uh, in case someone wants to build their own. The inside of a pedestal is very simple. There's a U-shaped tube connects the ink injection points to the, car to the cartridge. Therefore, we put a yellow cartridge on the pedestal. And then we fill the syringe with ink. After that, we put an adapter on top of the syringe. And we add ink until the ink coming out. Our final method is a cheaper version of a pedestal refill. Uh, BCH sells a storage clips for those twin chamber cartridges. You can find them under the accessories and the protective clip. Each clip has a silicone pad on the bottom to prevent the ink from leaking. So it will be useful to store cartridges or hold the cartridge during refills. We enlarge the bottom hole with a utility knife. Then we cut off a hole in the silicon pad. Cutting a hole is not easy and some people suggest using a cigarette lighter to heat up a paper clip and burn a hole.
after a hole is made, we'll mark the syringe and then make sure the syringe doesn't go too deep into the uh, the hole. In, uh, so it will poke the cartridge. And finally, we just fill the syringe with ink and inject ink into the cartridge. By now, we figure out that HP doesn't know how much ink is actually in a cartridge. HP estimates ink level by counting printed pages. For example, we're printing the 340 pages, and HP thinks the cartridge should, be, should print 380, so it estimates there are about 10% of ink left. However, actually you saw it, it didn't know the cartridge was empty. And HP's instant ink program will automatically order a new cartridge for you every 250 pages. So when we install the new cartridge, the print counter goes back to zero and restart counting. So that's how the instant ink works. So how about if we disable the counting? Can we then just refill and use the cartridge forever? No more HP guy knocking on the door and delivering cartridges? I'll be interesting. The old model called the counting chip info because the information is saved on a computer chip underneath the cartridge. In this demonstration, we're going to print, uh, we already printed with a chip info until now. And uh, we'll show you what happens if we turn the chip info off. The first page looks decent. However, do not trust the first page after refill. There may be old ink left in the printhead, and then there may be air bubbles sandwiched between the old and new ink. So the first page was printed with old ink. Our suspicion was approved. After the first page, the black printhead is clogged by a massive air bubble. The black color is missing from the printout. We use HP's building function to clean the printhead three times. HP has a three-level printhead cleaning routine. Each time you click clean again, it will clean harder. If we reach all three levels of cleaning, we should let the printer resting for at least two hours. The cleaning generates waste ink. If we do not let the printer recover, the printhead will be soaked with the waste ink and make things worse. So after three cleanings and two hours of resting, the black is recovered from clogging. We kept printing with the chip info on, and finally we reached HP's page limit on the black. Uh, we just hit OK, and the printer back to work. Uh, you can see the the black become unknown, and uh, the yellow magenta and the cyan still ten percent. Now we're going to turn off the chip info. We go to setup, then preferences and we scroll down to store anonymous usage information and turn it off. Remember, the printer has 10% uh, of yellow, cyan, and magenta. Uh, at least I think it has. Let's see what happens if we print with the chip info turned off. We're on page 351, 10% of colors, no black, chips info off, Everything's ready, and let's go. In the middle of printing, magenta is clogged. 
we did two head cleanings and we got a printer back to work. We printed about 200 pages. Now we're at page 557. The printer still thinks the ink level is the same as before. It's 10% of yellow, cyan, and magenta. Therefore, we can just fill and uh, print forever. Keep an eye on the printout and just add ink as needed. In the next video, We'll add ink to the back chamber for the Excel cartridge and double the capacity. The 902 Excel Black is super wide and holds, mu uh, holds much more ink. Also, we're going to make some chip holders from the startup cartridges and let them use the chipless transparent cartridge body. Therefore, we can peek inside the printer and find out exactly how much ink left in the cartridge. In the third video, we're going to connect the cartridge to this massive ink tank and supply the ink directly. No more refills and no more changing cartridges. It's very hard for us to describe how great it is. Yes, uh, that's how you describe it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or visit us locally at uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you and cheers.